hang on, hang on. There it is. It's going. It's going. Yeah. Wait, we weren't going before. But it kind of like takes a second to boot. And that's then that's how you start a, a video, everybody. Yes. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hello. the video. So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time with Rob, although we never had the chance to do it because um, we just didn't want to make videos. Um, but this is the topic I've wanted to be covering for a while now. Um, and it's just basically our uh, our top 10 favorite games, which is like a big, you'd say it's like a big, like top 10. Yeah, it was really hard to narrow down the mass amount of games that I've played and enjoyed so, down to just the, 10. The thing is like, when you're doing a top 10 games list, you can think of a couple ones that you can you really like like right off the bat. Like they're like, oh definitely I'm gonna put those ones, like five or like a couple, like a several ones. But then the other ones are like, oh fuck, maybe I like this one more than the other one. Yeah. So it can get a little tricky to narrow it down for sure, but I'm pretty happy with my list. I think that you know, if if I were to see it in the future, I think I'd I'd mostly agree with a lot of it. I mean, last time we did this, I, I I'd written this down before. But I um I changed it around a little bit, so. Um, the route that I, I took I, with mine, I kind of just wrote all the games down that I right. played, and then was so, like, I hated these ones. <laughs> right. So basically, me and Rob are gonna run through every one of ours. We're gonna have a little bit of discussion about each one, just kind of see what we like and talk about them. And uh, yeah, it, we're going kind of unscripted, so we're kind of just gonna wing it. Um. But, you know, we have a lot to say, we'll say it. And if we don't have a lot to say, then uh, we just move on. So I don't know anything what Rob's going to say, and he doesn't know anything about what I'm going to say. Yeet. So I try to diversify mine. So we didn't have any rules. So you can have more than one franchise if you want, um, more than one console. Um, you don't have to have – you can have a couple genres. It's just it's just your favorites. Like, it doesn't matter in that regard. Precisely. So – no holds barred. The list is the top ten favorite games we had. We didn't set any restrictions whatsoever. They just had no, no not, games. No, not at all. And it just it, there's uh, a lot of games I wanted to put on here, and I haven't played every game ever. So I mean, it's impossible. Very hard to do that. So um, if there's a game that I haven't played that is probably my favorite, and I don't even know it, then you know, Whoops. I mean, I, I I've been playing Doom recently. Doom 2016. Fucking awesome game, but I don't know if I put that on my favorites though. It's like a new favorite, but it's not like I wouldn't put that on my all time favorites. Well, let's, we've got a lot to talk about, so you ready to get started? Yeah, let's get straight into it. I'm going to right. start this. Rob's going Rob's to start it off, okay? So Rob's number 10. All right. So my number 10 favorite video game of all time is Rampage Total Destruction for the game. Which is. Which is a game? Oh wait, I think we played that before. Yeah, we we multiplayered that in college for a little bit. Okay, tell me about it. Well, that game came out in two thousand and six. It's just a straight action game. Uh, I played it a lot single player when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. Then once my sister started to learn how to play video games, that was the first one we started multiplayering. Uh huh. So it's got kind of that sentimental place in my heart. It was the first game that got my sister into video gaming mm -hmm. it's so basically a game where you go around as giant monsters and destroy cities by knocking down all the buildings mm -hmm. that's just it's fucking awesome you get to destroy cities you throw cars and you're a giant it's monster. like a it's like a godzilla kind of thing yeah in king kong basically yeah that's yeah no i i remember like seeing that at your house and i was like what is this game i've, I've never seen this before Yep, but it's it. like a it, it's like a fighting game or is it like a party game you'd say because i could more of a party game than anything right um uh, it was a remake of the uh, it was a remake of an arcade game so oh okay the ones that you would pay like, all right quarters for in the in the arcades cool cool yeah, yeah they should like dank ass game did they remake that or is that am i thinking of something completely different uh this game is the remake Oh, okay. Yeah. I can see the graphics. I'm like, that that would like do really well today if they had like different monsters and stuff. Like Yeah, that would be awesome. But... I never I never played this game, by the way. I've maybe played it at Rob's house once, but I never I've never owned it. But it looks cool. Yeah. It has what a makes lot it... of uh, a diverse play style, so there's a lot of different monsters that all have their different quirks and uh you basically try to unlock them all. And I, nice. I've been a completionist since I was a little kid, so. So what would make what would, what puts this in the realm of your favorites? Like, 
just good memories you've had. So sentimental, yeah. Yeah, it's like a nostalgia game. Precisely. Yeah, I have a couple of those. I've got a couple of those online. I mean, how can how can you not like, you know? Exactly. Anything right, else you got to say about it? That's my number ten. What's yours? All right. Uh, so my number ten is uh, Overwatch. So the first game on my list is actually the, the only pure multiplayer game that uh, is on there. So that Overwatch, I think, came out like 2016, uh, around May. Mm-hmm. I think May 24th, 2016 is what I is what I did a, a Wikipedia search on it. Yep. Um, so yeah, um, basically, so I never really got into first person shooters. I mean, I had a couple. Um, I had more Modern Warfare 2, and I had um, Call of Duty. Uh, Black Ops 1 and 2, um, but I never really got that into it. I just didn't like, I don't know, it just never really held my interest. Like, it was fun, but I wasn't very good at it, and um, I don't know, it just, a lot of the people, like, a lot of people at school had it, and it was just kind of the thing to play, and I kind of just got it just to fit in, but I didn't really, like, I just didn't like it that much, like, just those kinds of games, like, the, I don't know, it, the, the, maybe it's just, like, the way they present themselves, like, the graphics and stuff, it just didn't really appeal to me. Um, and also I had like a Wii for most of my life, so I didn't really get to play those. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, so Overwatch, uh, was actually the first first person shooter, like I could really get behind because I remember I saw like, um, I saw Eric, I saw you play and I saw Eric play it, um, is our friend in college. And I was just like, I was mesmerized because the game looked so like colorful Mm -hmm. and there were so many characters and there was so much going on too. And it, and basically you're not supposed to just like shoot everyone, although you can do that. The point is really to just like complete these objectives and take over points. Um, and it just, it, for me, it was like, it, I don't know. It's just, it's just very, it held my interest and I really got into it. And um, there's still di- a lot of different ways you can play it rewards, different play styles. So like you can be like a sniper and like just hang out in like the shadows and just snipe people. Or you could just get in the action and just like you'd be a tank. You could be like a shooter and just like go in and run and just fuck everything up. Um, and I love the presentation. The game is, is beautiful. I love all the character designs. They're all amazing. You know, um, right, yeah. and I really love it. Uh, what do you think? So I like Overwatch a lot. You know, it didn't make my list because I had a lot of other ones that I think deserve I'm... to be on it more. I'm surprised by that. I thought you were definitely going to put yours on it. It was pretty close. It didn't even get an honorable mention. I honestly forgot that that game existed. Wow. Um, But Overwatch, I like to play tanks, and I like to play healers, and plot twist, it's got a lot of those, so I had a great time. I can't shoot for shit. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like, Rob may not be able to shoot, but he could still play the game and have fun and, like, have a reward. Like, you could be a healer, and that doesn't sound fun, but you get rewarded for healing, and it, it feels like, you know, it's still as rewarding as, like, shooting people. Exactly. Which I think is, a, is like, you know, it, it feels very good to, to play different styles, and it rewards that kind of um, gameplay. So, yeah, I had a lot, I, I played a lot of Overwatch. I don't really play it as much now. I, I will probably get back into it, you know, maybe later on. But when I do play it, I play it a lot. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, that's... um. That, that's my favorite. You know, it's at the bottom. Uh, it's not my favorite game of all time, but I do. I mean, it is one of my favorite games of all time, but it's not like my my all time. You know, I, I would pop it in whenever I want, but it's the fir- it's my favorite first person shooter at the time. I really like it. So straight, yeah. I love Overwatch. It's a great game. Uh, Which console my favorite, did you play that on? I play it on PlayStation Four primarily. I don't really I don't really dabble in PCs that much. Yeah, I played on the PC. So I don't even know who my main is in that game. If I had to choose, like, uh, I want to say I'm a McCree guy. I do like McCree. Um, I was picking up Doomfist a lot, even though he's kind of bad. Oh boy! But uh, everyone. But the thing about that game is that everyone's very fun to play. So you can literally go with anyone, and you'll ha- have a good time. Mm-hmm. So Overwatch. That's my number ten. Awesome. That's what I got to say about that. So Rob, you're, uh, Great. you want to go next? Yeah. Moving on. So uh, my number nine game is probably one that Mike guessed. It's Pokemon Emerald. I'm surprised it's at the bottom of the list. I knew it was going to be on there. I didn't know it would be at the bottom. 
It's just, I have amazing <coughs> memories of the game. It was the first Pokemon game I ever got into. You know, came mm-hmm. out in 2005. I got it on Game Boy. Um, it was the only game I ever got on Game Boy. And it was a Game Boy that we picked up at a tag sale with uh-huh. this game in it. And it you mentioned that else's, before. It had somebody else's save file on it, and I didn't know how to reset it, and I didn't want to. So I just picked up their save file and ran it for like 5,000 hours. And that's the Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's incredible. That's the only game I ever got legitimate Pokemon to 100 in. Wow. Damn straight. Um, I just have amazing memories with it, but... Because I got it so early on in my childhood, I can't actually remember remember that much about it. Right, yeah, it'd be like that sometimes. Yeah, so that's why it's closer to the bottom than the top. Oh, I, that's that's surprising to me. I mean, I feel like you always bring up emeralds, like when you talk about your, like, like Pokemon. Like, that's always one you mention. Yeah, that was my gateway. I thought it was actually kind of like a hard game for the Pokemon <laughs> really? franchise. Yeah. It is it is difficult, I will say. Emerald is probably one of the harder harder games. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, yeah, no, uh, Emerald's very good. I, I actually grew an appreciation for for that generation of games. Um, Emerald is very good. I didn't I didn't play Emerald when it came out. Um, I'll be mentioning it later. My favorite pick. I also have a Pokemon one coming up. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. So. I mean, like, what makes it your favorite, though? Like, what puts it on the list for you? Definitely, I think that generation has my <laughs> favorite my favorite starters out of all of them. Swampert right. is my, my boy. Um, I actually, like, really like water-type Pokemon, and right. they do great in that generation. I there also lot- think that that particular generation has the best designs. There's a lot of water. Pokemon. There's a lot of water in Gen 3. <laughs> Definitely. This was a generation before they ran out of ideas for what to design Pokemon like. There's no ice uh, cream in this one. At Gen 5. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Emerald's great. Uh, I'm surprised it's that low for you, but hey, you have your reasons. Indeed I do. You're going to be shocked when you find out what comes up later. So that's my number okay. nine. Uh, go ahead. All right. Uh, my number nine is going to be Hollow Knight. Oh. Yeah. So Hollow Knight is um is a game that came out back in September 25, 2018. I didn't play it when it came out. I play it I played it last year. Um just out of word of mouth, uh I, there's a reviewer I watch on uh, YouTube um and he reviewed the game and I I was I really was intrigued by it and I just took the plunge. It was also $10 on uh the Nintendo Switch um on the Nintendo Switch uh online market. So not that big a plunge for something I might not like. Um, but luckily, I, I actually love it. First thing I got to say about the game, it is gorgeous. Um, if you, can, Rob, you should get up like a screenshot of the game or like a... Um, yeah, I planned on having up at least the uh, disc cover. Yeah, I mean, it, it, just to look at it, it's just a beautiful game. Like it's so, it, like, I don't know how long it must have taken to hand draw everything out, but everything is hand drawn. It looks so gorgeous. All the environments are beautiful, and it has this dark, dismal vibe to it, but it's also very cute at the same time. Like, the character designs are very cute and, like, derpy, um, which I think Rob can get behind. Damn straight. Um, And also, it's just, like, a a very open-ended game. It's an action-adventure platformer game. Um, And there's, like, it's a very large map. You have to discover everything. Um, You're not told where to go, what to do. It's kind of just, you have this whole world to explore go explore it. And I just, I, I, it's very fun. Uh, very hard, a very hard game. Um, you might have to grind up a little bit to, to do a lot of the stuff, but I really like playing games different ways. I like the feeling of improving as the game goes on. Like, you know what I'm kind of talking about? Like, yeah, I do. As, I as the game stuff. goes on, you get stronger as a character and it just, you know, it, it's, um, it, it makes me want to keep playing and getting better at it. Um, and there's many different endings to it, too. Um, so I'm definitely going to go back to it. Um, but it's a very, very open-ended game. It's very, it's an indie game. So nice. um, I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. But I, I was, like, thinking, I was like, you know what? I really do like Hot Night. And there's a sequel coming out, I think, sometime soon. I don't know if it's this year or next year, but I'm very excited to play it. Um, so, yeah, I love it. Uh, Beautiful-looking game. I love the gameplay. I love uh, that kind of style of game where it's just like a map open world 
uh, 2D platformer. Just really awesome game. Love it. Uh, definitely going to go back to it in the future. All right. And you played that on PS4? That one I played on the Switch, although it is oh, on the Switch, PS4. Switch. Got you. Yeah, I bought that one on the, the Switch market for, for 10 nice. bucks. Yeah. Best 10 bucks I ever spent. Damn for sweet. sure. Yeah. The next one on my... Uh, I've never played Hot Night, by the way, but based on what you're saying, I think I might go out and scoop it. I think you should give it a try. I think it's worth... I, I think it's worth putting some time into. You sold me at Derpy. <laughs> yep, I had you at... I had him at Derp. <laughs> yeah, the next game on my list is actually an open world game as well. All right, well, you're up next. What's on you? What's no, your number eight? Right. So my number eight is the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Oh, wow. I I'm so surprised that the games that I thought would be on your like top fives are like in your bottom fives. I'm yeah, so man. You're going to be surprised. shocked when you see what's down this list. I don't know much about like your, I don't know a lot about your like game preference. Like I know both the kinds of games you like, but I don't know exactly what is going to make it on your top list. But go, tell me, tell me about it. So most people know what the Elder Scrolls Skyrim is. I, mm -hmm. I got it uh, as soon as it was released in 2011 when it was super fucking buggy. And I got uh -huh. it on PC. It's an action RPG, open world. Y'all know the drill. Mm -hmm. Excellent storyline, amazing graphics for the time. Mm -hmm. and I had a computer that could run it, which was apparently really hard at the time. And I really like games with diverse play styles. You can right. customize your character. You know, everyone knows I like RPGs. You can customize your character, level them up how you, how you choose, and then if you get bored of your character's play style, you can revamp it later at no cost. You can delete them, make another one, play the mm -hmm. next game totally different. There's so many branching quests in that. In, there's so many, many quests. There's so many NPCs. Everything is unique. You mm -hmm. can mod the game. The modding community for Skyrim is honestly stunning and still is to this day. Of Skyrim's that I know. Of that I know. And uh, yeah, overall, all I got to say is Skyrim is amazing. Mike recently got it on what PS4 you got it for? I got it on Switch. <laughs> got it on Switch. <laughs> Yeah, I got it um, on Switch and reinvigorated my love for the game recently. Because I I got it on Christmas and I, I didn't know that you were such an expert at it. And I was like asking Rob and he knew like everything about it. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I know, Rob, you have definitely put a lot of time into it. Oh, yeah. My Steam um, I can, average is like 2000 now. Yeah, there, it, it's it's a huge game, man. There's a lot to take in, and I, I still haven't I haven't played it in a while, but I really did like it. Um, it's like a game you could really get immersed in. Yeah. Like, I can see how people could spend, like, hours and hours and hours and hours playing it, because there's so much to do. Um, too much to do. <laughs> too much, yeah. A lot of quests. Maybe 12 characters to get everything. <laughs> yeah, a lot of quests. And then um, when you run out of quests, get the DLC, and then get the mods. Yeah. This um, was the uh, first game that actually got me into PC gaming. <laughs> it was wow. the first game on my Steam account, too. My Steam account loaded with games to this day. Did you play any of the other Elder Scrolls games, or was it just this was Skyrim? My first and only. <laughs> one and done. <laughs> yeah, I'm not touching any other ones. <laughs> well, I, I think is the sixth one going to come out eventually. I'm eventually, sure it will. yeah, I saw some headlines about it. Maybe when this COVID nineteen crisis ends, we can start oh, getting trigger words. You know, I mean, if anything, they're going to monetize us because we're publicizing it because it gets a lot of publicity. <laughs> Right. Too much. That's my number eight. That's your number eight. All right. Yeah. I'll do Skyrim. Yeah. All right. I'll do. I'll do mine then. So number eight uh, is gonna be Animal Crossing. Oh. Uh, I kind of. I kind of. What's that reaction? <laughs> I knew it was gonna be there. I know. Um, I thought. But it yes. Be um, I think. I mean, I would like to say New Horizons, although it just came out and. I want to give it a little more time to simmer, but I think if I were to count everything together, I'd still put Animal Crossing on like number eight, just if I lumped them together. City Folk on the Wii. Uh, there's City Folk on the Wii, and there was a New Leaf on the 3DS, which I played the most of, and um, New Horizons, which just came out on the Switch. Um, so yeah, where do I start? Um, it's very cute. Uh, it's a. I've never played... I never really play Sim games. Like I've never played The Sims 
or anything like that. That's not really my like um kind of game. But um I don't know, I kinda like I think we got City Folk. Like me and my sister played a lot of that. Like that was like the game that we shared the most because we could all get on the same town and um customize it. The, the whole thing about the game is that it's just you're doing a lot of nothing, but it's fun. And like all you do is like pick apples and plant flowers and talk to your neighbors and that's basically it but uh it's hard to get things like it's hard to get a lot of things easily and the game rewards you for just coming in and just playing a little bit and then just interacting with everyone Mm -hmm. um it's a game you could spend a lot of time on a lot of time customizing things um it's just like it's hard to describe why you like it because it's a lot of just nothing but it's it's addicting and the new game that came out holy shit they just like went ham on the new game they went they just like we're like we're gonna give everyone everything every option you ever wanted we're just gonna put it in i mean i definitely say new horizon is like my favorite so far even though it's been like only a month barely a month um actually it's gonna be a month in like a couple days but it came out at a great time you know with this whole thing everyone's inside why not spend all your time playing this adorable game and talking to your neighbors? It's just, you know, I have a lot of memories of my sisters playing it. Um, and yeah, it's just a great game. I can't, you know, it's very relaxing, very relaxing game. Like you can just like go to the beach and fish and it just, it, it's just it, very simple, very simple game, easy to pick up and just get lost in. And you can spend a lot of hours in it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I feel that man. So, uh, which Animal Crossing game did you pick for this? Uh, if you had to twist my arm, I'd probably say New Horizons. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I think it just is the best one so far. Just it, it's like dead. even though it's only been a month, but I can already tell I'm going to be spending a lot of time on it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I haven't like missed a day really since it came out. So that's got to mean something. Yeah, it's does. it's it's also the new game is gorgeous. The visuals are very simple, but they just when it rains, oh, it's so nice, and when the wind sways through the trees, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so like nice and pleasant. It's just a pleasant, pleasant game. Nothing That's like, the best way I can describe it. Nothing like accidentally walking through your flowers and decapitating them. You don't want to do that. That's fucked up. Yep. That'll take me over the edge. But yeah, Animal Crossing is great. I had a lot of time. I had a lot of fun with all the games. Um, my sisters have a lot of fun with it, and uh, yeah, a lot of great memories with those uh, with those games. Animal Crossing, it's great, very cute. Um, yeah, I love it. <laughs> That's my number eight. Big fan. On to my number seven then. Okay. So my number seven is Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Oh really? Oh sorry, it worked. <laughs> Yeah, for the Wii. <laughs> okay, great. Tell me. So, so yeah, I love I love Smash Bros. Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> Super Smash, so like I enjoy that entire franchise. I've been a fan all the way up from Melee, although I've never mm-hmm. played the N sixty four version. Mm-hmm. Um, played them each individually all the way up. I ac- absolutely love fighting games. I love the feel of all the characters. I like how you get to choose your main and. Mm-hmm. A bunch of mains and it just so happens to turn out that i play a lot of different characters yeah and um super smash bros brawl specifically for the wii has a mm-hmm. place close to my heart for all the sentimental reasons mm-hmm. i got it pretty soon after i got a wii mm-hmm. and played it a lot with my friends growing up and then yeah. we, i took the wii to college and played it with my college friends mm-hmm. i have very fond memories of that and then we yep. modded it out didn't we not we did we did mod, um, we modded the Wii U version when it came out, because that's the, Smash 4 for the Wii U came out in college, but we did have the Brawl for a little bit. Yeah, we ran it at least freshman year. Mm-hmm. Right. Good times. Yeah. Um, yeah, Smash Bros. is awesome, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I mean, uh, it might be coming up later in mine. I won't tell you where it's going to be. Um but yeah, no, Brawl is great. Uh, I really enjoyed and yeah, we had a lot of fun playing that. I remember I played that at your house, um, your old house. Yeah. Um, a lot of times we had a lot of good times just like modding out the um making our own levels. 
Um, I love the subspace emissary in that game. It was a good subspace. Brawl, Brawl still has the best single player experience, hands down, of all the games. Definitely. Without a doubt. And there's so much, so many trophies to collect, too. Oh, yeah. There comes my, uh, my, uh, completionist side is that I had to go and get all the trophies. Yeah. And um, was it hard? Yeah, but you have all the trophies? I got all the trophies. That's fucking impressive. Hell yes, it is. Yeah, Brawl's, Brawl's amazing. The wait for that game was just absolutely ridiculous. I didn't have a Wii when that game was coming out, and when I got one, I was so I was so excited that eventually I would get to play it. Oh, good times. Good freaking times, Nothing man. like ditching those melee physics. So you prefer Brawl over the new ones? I prefer that one. I think <laughs> I had the best time with that one. Just for just for the uh, but the sentimental nostalgic reasons. Yeah, like I I dig the new games quite a bit. You know, I really like the online capabilities now. Mm-hmm. But this one I had the best time with. Yeah, no, I love Brawl's awesome, man. Yeah, sure. Love that game. That's all I gotta say about my number seven. I got more to say about Smash later on, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save my piece for for later on. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right, so my number seven is going to be Portal 2, which I got on the Xbox 360. Of course. Um, so, yeah, I, um, what can I say about Portal 2? It's a um, very funny game. I love the – well, for, actually, let's just start. I love the, the, the gameplay. Um, the puzzles are very, very fun. Um, very uh, interesting puzzle with the portals and the physics engines. Um, and it's, uh, it's just very, very fun. Uh, you can spend a lot of time on the puzzles, and they're all very fun to figure out when you do figure them out. It's like the most satisfying thing ever. Uh, I love the graphical style. It's very simple. I mean, now it's not going to win any awards or anything, but I still find it very appealing to the eye. I love the little um, – uh, all the graphics, uh, all the robots that are in the game have a lot of nice um, animation and uh, expressions. Um, and it's it's, it's – um, I, I love the look of it. Um, it's also um, very funny, very funny game. Uh, it's like the first game that I ever played that actually like made me laugh a lot while I was playing it. Um, just because like the main character, one of the main characters, Wheatley, um, he's so fucking funny. <laughs> um, and this the the dialogue is b- b- between Glados and um, the, I mean the main character doesn't talk, but Glados talks quite a bit, and she always has like little. She's always shit talking you the whole game, and it makes you just. It keeps keep keeps you going and makes you want to play and see more of the story. Uh, it's also very replayable. It's quick. You can beat the game in like four hours. Um, it's super fun though. I, I really like it. Um, what puts it in my favorite is just like, you know, I could just go back and play Portal Two and just have the same amount of fun I have every other time. And I could speed run it, and I just love, I love the dialogue and I love the story. It's uh, really great. I played Portal 1. I liked it. Uh, Portal 2, I just enjoyed a lot more. <laughs> we actually had a playthrough of Portal 2 at some point. Not What's on the that? channel, but we definitely played through that game together. I think we played maybe co-op a little bit. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, the po- I haven't really played Portal 2 co-op that much. Um, it's a little tricky, but um, maybe, maybe we should play it again, me and Rob. That'd be fun to see us yell at each other. Give it the old wing dinga. Yep, give it the give it the good old college try. Sweet. Um. So yeah, I don't really have any like sentimentality with it. Um. I just really enjoyed the game. Um. We'll get. I'm gonna get more sentimental as the list goes on. But yeah. Um. Yeah. Portal Two, great game. Very fun puzzle. My favorite puzzle game. They really gotta make a three, a third game, but Valve can't count to three, so that's not gonna happen. Yep. Hashtag Half Life. That's all I got. Yeah, Half Life. I haven't played Half Life, although I would I would like to. Have you played Half Life? I have not. I heard I there like was to play only two. I heard there was two, and they want them to have a third, but it's never going to happen. It might happen though. Good memes. Good memes all around. All right. Well, that was my number seven. Great. On to my six. So, my number six is the first and only duplicate franchise on my list. Okay. It is Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness for the hmm. GameCube. Okay. Yeah. That one came out in 2005. Um, 
I was given it to it was given to me as a birthday present from a friend. I think he moved away back to like Peru or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, he left me Colosseum and Gale of Darkness, and the Colosseum disc didn't work, but the Gale of Darkness one did. And mm-hmm. I had to go out and buy another memory card because that thing takes up so much space. That mm-hmm. um, it was my first taste of 3D Pokemon, and I had an absolute blast with that game. It came mm-hmm. to me at exactly the right time. It, it was the first time I ever had an Eevee. Boy, was that a trip. I mm-hmm. love those things. Eevee's cute, can't I deny. got my Eevee, I pimped it out, got it all the way up to 100 as a Vaporeon, and then uh, deleted my save, and did it all again with the Jolteon. That's how much I wow. love that game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I played through it a couple of times, each time picking a different Evolution. Umbreon sucks. Um <laughs> I like Umbreon. The gimmick for that game is you gotta go around and like smack the shit out of bad guys that are collecting shadow Pokemon, which are just the dark version of their Pokemon. Right. And uh, they seal their hearts, and you gotta unseal their hearts, and then... Uh, yeah, that's basically it. And Mirror B music is amazing. I, haven't, uh, I have not played that game. Damn. XD, Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness, and Coliseum, I've never touched. Even though you and Eric say I need to play it. Yeah, you really should. I'm sure it's probably rated horribly because of how mm-hmm. slow and chuggy the gameplay See, is. See, that's what, that's what turns me off about it, is that it just looks slow to me, and I don't like slow. I like things to move along quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I you just... The slowness of this game makes you really appreciate what's actually going on. It makes you pick moves that have quick animations. Mm-hmm. Uh, be, if that's the case where you're just picking moves that go quicker and not, I don't know. I don't want to slam your your pick. I feel slow. But I mean, what what makes it what makes you what makes you like it so much though? Like what? I, what makes you like it more than Emerald? So what makes me like this more than Emerald is I feel like I was able to collect more of a variety of Pokemon in this game, even though it came before Emerald. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's same act- actually same year, but like it was an off generation of Gen 3 that was appearing in Gale of Darkness. So I mm-hmm. never got to play um, anything out of first or second gen for Pokemon. Right. So having those Pokemon compared to the several thousand hours i've already put into emerald it felt very refreshing it has uh instead of like tall grass areas that you catch pokemon mm-hmm. it has these things like pokey spots where you throw down snacks and pokemon come to come to you right and uh it has a very restrained amount of pokemon you can get but the moves are actually like beautiful to see and even though everyone looks like they're a blob with, you know, pointy hands and feet, uh, the Pokemon look very nice in their 3D animations. It's funny that I think some of the animations in those games actually look better than that came out in Sword and Shield. It's hilarious. It's, it's kind of sad for Sword and Shield. Moves, yeah. Um, well, yeah, no, I've, I've always wanted to play those games. Maybe we could play that together. Maybe. Um, it's really long. Yeah, but I, I can mean, definitely slip you the disc. Maybe when I'm feeling very adventurous, I'll give it a shot. Sure. I feel like I had to grow up with it to really get an appreciation for it. Yeah, that's definitely what did it for me. Well, <laughs> that's my six. Anything else to say? Uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> Next. It's good. It is good game. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. Um. So my number six is actually Pokemon as well, but my favorite Pokemon game, I think Rob knows what I'm going to say, is Pokemon White 2. Yeah, I had a feeling. All right. This is where I start gushing about the games. I fucking love Pokemon White 2. I was already... So I had gotten into Pokemon with Pokemon White that I uh, I just bought on a whim just because I was on a, a road trip and I wanted to play it, and I fell in love with it. I loved the way it was but I didn't really get that far into it. Um, but eventually I did come back to it and I played it and I really loved it. And then uh, Pokemon White 2, I was actually right on board when that game came out and I got it like right around launch. Holy fucking shit. Um, and actually a funny story, this came out around Hur- when Hurricane Sandy 
um, was around. Do you remember that whole thing? How could I forget? We live so in the the Hurricane Sandy, destroyed. I think that came, so that was in 2012 when that game came out. So there was a big hurricane that hit the eastern seaboard. I mean, I, I think it came all the way on the east, co- east coast. Um, fucking annihilated everything. Um, schools were down for like a month and everything was like, I'm, I'm kind of going off track, but it, it's just, you know, it, it's just, I'm framing the nostalgia, but you know, everything was shut down and there was like no power. Yeah. So I remember that so well, but I also remember whenever I think of Hurricane Sandy, I always think of Pokemon White too. Because even though like we had no power and ho- it was right around Halloween and everything was so shitty, I still had a lot of fun playing the game. I played it for hours and hours and hours. I have the guidebook for it. And I just had so much fun going through the game. It's my favorite generation of Pokemon. It goes so fast. Um, the, battle, the battle animations are really quick and snappy. I love the animations in the game. I still think it's the best looking of the, of the games. Like just DS wise, I think. Wow. It's gorgeous. That's quite I go as far as say it. I think it looks the best. I think the way the Pokemon move, they have so much character. It's so colorful. The music is so incredibly, so incredibly okay. catchy and unbelievable. I think Gen 5 is finally starting to get the appreciation it deserves. Because um, it used to be like the black sheep. Now I think people are really like, wow, Gen 5 is actually fucking good. Um and what I love about the game is that there's many, many different Pokemon to catch. They rem- they remedied um, the problem with the, the first game, Pokemon Black, because it was just Pokemon from the first generation. It, it was ju- just Gen 5 Pokemon. There was no other ones to choose from. So you couldn't have, like, say, Pikachu or anything in Black and White without trading it over from another game. But in Black and White 2, you have so many options from all different generations so you could play every single game could be a totally different experience depending on who you pick. And that's what always kept me going back to it because it was always a different experience every time we went there. And it pretty much solidified me being a Pokemon fan for life. Wow. It was just a lot of fun. <laughs> Strong words for number six. Well, I listen, man. <laughs> I, 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 there's going to be more coming up, but I really, I think Pokemon White 2 is, is, is I have a lot of memories with it. I've, it's, I've have, Many, many save files that I've, I've probably played through that game maybe 50 times, no exaggeration. Damn. All right. I actually got Black 2 instead of White 2 and ran through See? that side of things. <laughs> How'd that go for you? It was good. I prefer Black. I mean, they're the same game. It's just the, the, it's just the types. Yeah. Um, I think the internet wants to know which starter do you pick. I always pick uh, Snivy. Yeah, me too. Well, I don't always pick... I do change it up a little bit, but my but Superior is my favorite of the of the bunch. Superior just looks so good. Very defensive. I, I yeah, it definitely has my favorite design. One of my favorite designs of all time, and also it's just my favorite of the three. Grass is pretty strong in that generation too. Lots of water Pokemon. There, I mean, yeah, there are. Um, but yeah, Gen Five, White Two specifically, pretty fucking awesome, and it's not. A walk in the park either like you'll you'll lose a couple times it's not it's not hard as nails but it's not a walk in the park either like you gotta know your shit so i really enjoy that game i love it a lot um but there's five more games that i like a little bit more <laughs> a lot more actually wow all right let's uh begin the top, top fives. fives all right oh, we said that at the same time oh man <laughs> All right, so these ones were no-brainers for me. I was able to pick out five games that I actually like adored and had to put on this yeah. list in this exact order. I just I feel that it. I felt the same exact way. Like whenever I knew that the games that came right to my mind um, were the ones that were going to end up at the top five. Precisely, they're just the ones that I have the most sentimental value with, had the best time playing, or have the most hours in. Mm-hmm. So my number five is. Uh, probably, yeah, it's the only recent game on my list. It is Stardew Valley for the PC. I've never played that, and I want to hear what you have to say about it. Okay, so Stardew Valley is a, is an indie RPG game where you're given a farm and told to restore the farm and restore the community that you're put in. And it, you know, I'm a green thumb. I love farming. 
I loved Harvest Moon. Not gonna shout that game out though. Um, okay. It's a it's a game where you start out with nothing and you slowly level yourself up and level up your skills and your mm-hmm. tools and all that stuff to get more money. And there's a lot of achievements for it. I still haven't completionisted it because fuck, one of the achievements is so hard. Mm-hmm. Um, it's super cute. All of the char- all the characters have their quirks. It's very bright. It's very colorful. I'm looking very it up right now. It's very colorful. There's a lot of different skills and like a, a lot of different things for you to accomplish in your town. There's one major like decision you have to make, and that's whether or not you restore the what's called the community center. You mm-hmm. effectively restore the sense of community that the town had, or you sell it out to a big name company. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always used to do the community center, but I had to do one save file where I had to sell the thing out just to get an achievement. And then oh my I deleted God. that save file immediately because it made me so sad. Oh my God. What a, what a, um, a price to pay. <laughs> I know, right? I put so many hours into that thing just to get that file up. And then I just canned it. Oh my God. Um, it's, it's on my list because of how many hours I've put into it in a game that just came out in 2016, I probably have logged maybe 2,500 hours in the damn thing. Jesus. Some I've games just be like that, though. Multiple farms. Recently, it came out with multiplayer compatibility, and I've been doing that. Oh, boy. Me and my friends' farms are looking nice. It comes with a strong design aspect also. You're able to kind of customize the look of your farm, and I've always liked games where you can do that. It's like a it's like a life sim, right? It's kind of like an Animal Crossing situation. Yeah, it's it's a sim. It's a farming sim. Nice. And, uh, there's lots of activities. You can farm, you can fish, you can fight, you can go exploring and mining and stuff like that. The chicken is pretty cute. It is a cute chicken, yes. <laughs> um, so, that's, wow. That's what I got to say about Stardew Valley. I love the name and the music is amazing. It looks very fun. It seems like I didn't know that's something you would be into, but yeah. I mean, I know you. I know you love your plants, so I feel like this is like right up your alley. It's basically Animal Crossing for the PC. Well, wow, it looks it looks fun. I'm sure you have a good time with it. I mean, it looks maybe I would be interested in it. Do you think I could get into it? You would enjoy the hell out of it. I feel like I would, I'd be that kind of game where I wouldn't want to put it down. Yep, it's one of those. Once you start playing, you're going to be like, wow, I, I'm having a great time, and I don't want to stop. So like, Life? What's that? <laughs> exactly. Especially uh, right now. All right, that's all I've got to say about my number five. Let's all right, nice. Top. Great. All right, so top five games. Here we go. So number five is uh, going to be an, a throwback Super Metroid uh, that was released for the Super Nintendo. Oh, wow. So I played it on the Wii U um, when it was on the virtual console or whatever it's called, the eShop. Yeah, the eShop. Um, so I was never really into Metroid. I was never really into the kind of gameplay where it's called Metroidvania, where you're very much like Hollow Knight, where it's like a big um, open world and you can just explore it all at your own leisure. And it's a lot of finding secrets um, and action. And... When I played Super Metroid, I was I wasn't really into like old gaming. I mean, I was into like old eight bit games, but I've never played anything like. Well, actually, I'm gonna redact that whole statement. Um, I've never played a Metroid game before. I had no idea what to expect. It blew me away with just how gloomy the game was, how dark it was, and it was a Nintendo game. Um, it's just so it, it's so replayable. It's so fun. I love the music. I love the graphical presentation. It's so nice. Not- for, the- for 1994, people must have been shitting their pants because it is just gorgeous looking game. Um, and this game is so much fun too. You can speed run the game. Um, I love the feeling of, I-, I love just going through the game. Cut. You can do so many, you can like um, shortcut so many times during the game to get upgrades e- much earlier than you're supposed to get it. Um, and, it, and I love the gameplay. Shooting things is so satisfying. Um, finding new areas is very fun. Backtracking t- to improve the whole way. Super fun. Very rewarding game. Um, and I spent a lot of time on that summer just playing. I think I got this. 
I, I, I don't remember when I played this game. I, I think I played it right. It was in high school. I think I was in 11th grade. Um, really hooked me in. I really liked it. Yeah, probably around that time. Uh, really hooked me in. I really love it. And that got me to play Metroid Prime. Uh, and I've been playing a lot of other Metroid games. Um, and that really got me into the whole character. I love Samus. It's my favorite. It, 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 it probably is my favorite Nintendo franchise. Um, I really love it. Uh, Metroid is great. Really underappreciated. Uh, really underappreciated, like, uh, IP of Nintendo. They really got to do more with uh, Metroid. But I really love it. It got me into the whole genre of that uh, just 2D platformer, or not even 2D action adventure games. Really got me hooked. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, and every time I see a game that's like that, I want to just play it just so it can remind me of Metroid. I'm looking forward to Metroid Prime 3. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm perfectly fine with replaying Super Metroid over and over again. I love it so much. I really do. Damn, all right. Well, as far as Metroid games go, I've never actually played one. Actually, Most people haven't. My tongue. I did own a Metroid game. I owned Metroid Prime for the GameCube. I think I played like 20 minutes of it, got stuck, raged, and threw the disc mm. away. Yeah. So I never they, gave that series a chance. There's a there's a turnoff because a lot of people get stuck, and I think people get turned off by the backtracking because in order to, to go forward, you might have to go backward to go forward. Um, it can kind of turn some people off. I really like it because it, it, it's more exploration, um, and it, it's rewarding. It's like, oh, man, I can't wait to get this upgrade. Now I can finally go to this new area. Then I can get this upgrade and go to the new area. I just, you know, it, it's very, it strings me along, and it, it, I, you know, I don't want to put it down when I'm playing it. Okay. And yeah, that's all I got to say. Super Metroid, fucking awesome game. Uh, really got me hooked on the Metroid uh, series in general, and I just want to see what's next. Good to know. All right. All right. Moving on. So my number four is the one and only MMORPG that's on my list. It is Wizard 101. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Tell me, okay, I want to hear this. So, first off, shameless plug, I have Wizard 101 gameplay on my solo channel. I'll throw that in the description real quick. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's there. Uh, that game came out in 2008 um, on the PC. MMORPG, massively multiplayer online role-playing games. Okay. And it's a level-based game. This one's hardly, or very heavily based off of the fantasy genre that you can become a wizard. And mm -hmm. You get spells, and you go and you beat things big baddies and then you level up and you beat harder things and stuff like that mm -hmm. um i have a very fond memory of this where it was in the fourth or sixth grade boys we were mike and yes. i we were at camp together and mm -hmm. uh, we had this one friend who was kind of quiet and he liked this game and i wanted to hang out with him a lot so mm -hmm. i started playing this game and i got hooked like super duper hooked and i got hooked and i got closer with this friend and then i got my sister into it and we started playing together online and then i mm -hmm. got my mom into it and we started playing together online oh that's great and i got a bunch of friends to go and play the game and we had an absolute blast just doing nonsense things <laughs> online in the same realms and stuff like that and uh to this day it's one of the longest games i've ever played I, I still kind of play it on and off. It's just so damn expensive. Is it still open? Do people still play it? Yeah. The the Wizard 101 community is still alive. Really? It's I, kind I would, of popping, too. I would not think that. But... It looks more popular now than it did in 2008. Wow. <laughs> I saw. Um, I remember seeing advertisements for that all the time. Yep. All and the time. Advertised on all the kids' channels. It was... Wizards 101, where you can be a wizard. I don't know if that's what it said. <laughs> Every single time it phases out of my... Like, I, I cycle through games in phases. Every single time mm -hmm. this game phases out of my life, they'll come out and they'll put out an advertisement that they added a new feature to the game, like they added pets. And boy, do I love derpy little fluffy things following me around. Mm -hmm. And then I faded out. And then they added a new world. And then I came back in, and then I faded out. And then they added gardening. And boy, did I stick around for a while after that. <laughs> wow. And I faded out. 
and then they added fishing and I came back and it just they keep adding things to this game that I loved so much as a child and I still play it to this day because it's that good. I guess it's just the kind of game that just keeps on giving. Yeah. And What's the game? So gameplay, it's kind of like, is it sort of like a World of Warcraft kind of thing? Um, yes, it's it's super close to World of Warcraft, except it's geared more towards kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of the people playing now are not kids. <laughs> they are grown adults. <laughs> they're, they're adults that have hung on to their accounts since they were younger. That's incredible. So, like, a lot of the community right now is mid-20s. Well, is it free to play or do you have to? It's free to play up to a certain point. Oh, okay. And then it's pay to play, but you can pay to play a little bit and then unlock things for your entire life. Like I bought, I bought like areas with gift cards that my parents used to give for me for my birthdays. And those areas I still have unlocked to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, Or you can get a membership and then everything's unlocked for you for a certain amount of time. And wow. The expenses rack up if you forget to cancel your membership stuff. It sounds, it sounds like something you'd be into. It's pretty fun. Lots of derp. <laughs> Lots of derp. <laughs> hey, man. Sometimes the games that you like the most, you have the most memories with. That's how it really is. It seems what it seems like. Definitely. I've got a level 94 wizard. 94. That's wow. what I have to say. That took a lot of fucking time. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Damn. I have. What's your number four? All right, number four. Um. Okay. So I knew there was gonna be a Zelda game on the list. I knew. Too. Um. I I was really debating on what it was, and I've been I've been thinking to myself, like, what is my favorite Zelda? It's Ocarina of um, Time, isn't it? Majora's Mask. Wow. My favorite game, my favorite Zelda game is Majora's Mask. And I know I'm not alone in saying this. I know I, it might be even a cliche because I think it's it used to be the black sheep of the franchise. Now I think people are really appreciating it. Appreciating it. Um, let me just say, I I never really played Zelda that much when it came out. I didn't, no, I didn't even play Majora's Mask. In the, I didn't have an N64 growing up. But... Um, I, I don't even know how I like really even learned about it. I just knew, I think I've seen it online, how many people have played like through the game and have said positive things about it. Like this is like, I love the, the, the three day mechanic of it. That's what piqued my interest is that you only have three days to save the world from this, from this moon that's going to crash into the, into the whole, I don't even know what, you have three days to save the world from a moon crashing into the, the planet. <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty fucking cr- extreme. The whole game, if I could just start, is very dark, very unlike any other kind of Zelda game. It is, I mean, it's like a Zelda game. It plays like one, but the whole environments are very dark and gloomy. The whole game is just very melancholy, sad. Everyone's like, oh, we're going to fucking die. Um, <laughs> pretty basically, um, to sum it up. Fucking mood. Uh, <laughs> basically. Um, and the more I played it, the more I just appreciated it. And it's gotten to the point where I can't get past a, a Halloween season. And I love Halloween. I love everything about that season. I love the dark, gloomy atmosphere. Um, I love, um, you know, I just love that whole ambiance. Majora's Mask is just Halloween, like, in a game to me. And every time the October season rolls around, I got to play Majora's Mask. It's like an annual game for me. It's so replayable. There's so many quests to do. There's so many different things you can do, collect. Um, and the three-day mechanic is implemented so well. There's different quests you can do on different days. Um, so many things to... There's so many great characters to interact with. Some quests go the whole three-day cycle. Sometimes you got to go back. There's one really great quest. We have to fend off aliens from a girl. There's one where you have to... Um, you have to do like a race. Um, there's so many different things the game is having you do and throwing at you. And it's it's funny that I really it was between this and Wind Waker. Yep. But I really had to go with Majora's Mask just because I just love the ambition and how unique it is, because no other Zelda game plays like it. It's very much its own kind of beast. Um I really love it. I really appreciate it. Um it it's just I you know, I, I always come back to that game. It's Fantastic. It's an annual play for me. Damn straight. Um, really love it. Me have you played 
Have you played Majora's Mask? I haven't played Majora's Mask, but I've watched you play it. And I've watched you play all the way through it. So I know how it plays. And I personally think that while, yes, the characters are very gloomy, that game is quite bright. It's it's I love colorful. The colors. Everything is super contrasty and clashy all at once. If there's a game I would really want to get an HD remaster, I so want Majora's Mask to be just brought onto a console. Like I don't want a 3DS port, even though a 3DS port is very good. Um, I just so badly want an HD remake of it. It just begs for it. Yeah, I really enjoy the stage building of that game. Mm-hmm. It just looks super well and it plays really well and all the platforming is just right. Right. Yeah. Um, Definitely, it's just probably the best best Zelda game I haven't played. You should, you got to get on that, man. Majora's Mask is like a must play game. Once you can get, cause see, the thing is, once you know how to exploit the time system, um, it, it first of all, it takes a lot of stress off the player, and it opens up all the puzzles in the game that are all based around that. When I mean, they're not all based around the time mechanic, but it's always, it's always there. It's always a game that like you're always on edge while you're playing it because. Even though it, you know you can slow down the time in the game, it, it's still ha- it's still gonna come. You're still gonna die eventually if you don't do all this stuff. So, you know, it's a very motivating factor. Like all you have to do is look up and you see that fucking crazy, creepy ass moon looking at you, reminding you, hey, you better fucking move or else everyone's gonna fucking die. So, um, I really love it for that. Um, you know, uh, I you know it, it's just it's just great. Uh, I really love it. <laughs> music is amazing too. I agree. The music is amazing. I just, yeah, my favorite Zelda. I mean, I love Breath of the Wild too. Um, that one was beautiful. That one was very. That one almost made it. I mean, I mean honestly, no. It, it it was between this and Wind Waker, um, and I really wanted to put Wind Waker on it. Um, but I just think Majora's Mask just, I think it's just a little bit more unique, a little bit better, and a little bit more just of what I'm looking for in a game. It's just, it's its own thing. Play it every Halloween. Gives me that same kind of vibe. Um, I, I got to play through the whole thing. Got to collect all the masks. Um, I really love Majora's Mask. It is beautiful. I love the whole community that revolves around it. Yeah, I agree. It's a great game. Can't say more about it. <laughs> I wonder how many times during this this whole the next few games this would be like this game's so great I love it so much and there's no like no substance but you know my favorite games are just my favorite games what can I say Yeah exactly let's keep going All right so. All Right So top 3 my number 3 favorite video game of all time is Medieval 2 Total War no. Okay I could see that coming yeah, it's it's a turn-based strategy game. It came out in 2006. It's a part of the Total War franchise, which uh, they're still rolling with this franchise. Recently, they came out with Warhammer 2, which mm-hmm. is a freaking smash. Um, my computer can't run it, though. Whoops. Uh, that game is single-player with multiplayer capabilities. Um, I It was definitely one of the games that got me into PC gaming. Mm-hmm. Still to this day, I play it, and I, I think I got it in, like, 2008. I went up to Maine, saw my cousin was playing it, was like, yo, what's that? And he's like, yo, it's this game. Try it. And I was like, okay. So I tried it, but I put in all the wrong uh, difficulty settings, so I got fucked <laughs> <laughs> horribly in my first playthrough of it. And I was like, uh, what did I do wrong? And he's like, why did you give away all your settlements? <laughs> You did, you're doing it wrong. You, you're supposed to take the lands, not give them all away. Like, but, but they looked like they wanted them. I thought it would be nice. Communist. Yeah. Um, but I think that that is a master game. It's It really capitalizes on the turn-based strategy genre. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like real-time consequences if you make the wrong choices in that game when you're playing on the higher difficulties and the very hard difficulty is really freaking hard (laughs) i've only beat a few of the campaigns on that level of difficulty and i'm pretty good at the game um it does have its quirks there's some things about it that just kind of snap like rebels are really strong and annoying and Heretics are really strong and annoying, and they try to convert all your settlements. But the way that that game works is you play as a faction, 
Right. Um, it starts in like 1180 AD, the year. Okay. Right, right. And uh, you have to conquer a certain parameter. Say you have to take 15 lands and you have to knock these factions out of the game to win your game. Mm -hmm. And from there, you can choose to keep playing, and it takes place in Europe and uh, Northern Africa and Eastern Asia, or Western Asia. There's so many different factions that you can keep replaying the game as a different faction over and over again, and it doesn't ever feel like you're playing the same game. Right, right. I like games that are different every time you play them. Yeah. Replayability is very key, I think. Exactly, and that's what's kept me a fan of the series for so long. The... Each faction has its different quirks. It has its different starting positions. You can play as like England, France, and Scotland. And this is another one of those games where I have series. I've um, I've got series running on my solo channel for them, and mm-hmm. the majority of the channel is actually Medieval Two Total War gameplay. Okay. Um, you can keep playing, and they have their own unique units. Every faction, um, mm-hmm. unique victory conditions uh you can go on crusades or you can go on jihads and stuff like that everyone's got a religion. <laughs> oh, fuck. when the time comes you Sounds can even intense. conquer the americas <laughs> deus volt if you know what i'm saying damn um but what keeps me coming back is that every single time you play the game it's different the mm-hmm. ai is really good um it won't it, it the AI doesn't make predictable moves when it's matched up against other AI. So when it's against a human, you can usually tell what it's going to do, but you don't know what it's going to do to the other AI, so you don't know what the map's going to look like. When right, you get right. There. It okay. could be that, you know, Portugal, they usually suck, but in some series of the game, Portugal could take over all of Europe, and you're just like, what the fuck? Why is Portugal in Rome? How did they get there? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Um. Recently, what's re-sparked my interest in the game is that I got a mod for it that I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers play. And boy, is that a stacked... It feels like a new game with this mod. Hmm. Um, I got the Stainless Steel mod, which adds a whole bunch of new settlements to the game and new factions and new units, and everything takes longer, and it's way harder, and oh boy, <laughs> new game. More to, more, more to play, though. Yeah, it keeps coming. It's the game that keeps on giving. Which is what you want a game to do, right? Like, yeah, definitely. There's some games that are just like, they're just your like comfort zone. Like, there's games that like you can just like put on any time and just be like, I'm just gonna play this forever, and you could be totally fine just playing that one game over and over. Definitely. And like, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I-, I totally feel that way with some games. Yeah, and there's so many different ways you can achieve your win conditions in these games. You can kill all of the other faction's family members, and then the faction crumbles, and you can use assassins, and you can use princesses to charm the other family members. What the fucking like variables in this game, damn. Spies, and diplomats, and merchants, and priests, and oh my god, there's so many agents. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this game is that it doesn't have any achievements. No achievements. Mm. Big sad. Yeah. That's all I've got to say about my number three. Well, you have a lot, yeah, you have a lot to say, I mean... I've never played, I'm not really into tactical RPGs like that. Um, they're not really my thing. They're not really my thing. I tried to play Fire Emblem Awakening, um, which is kind of like that. Uh, it, have you played Fire Emblem before? Yes, I have. You like it? I like Fire Emblem. I think it's a pretty solid turn-based. I just, I, I mean, for me, I just, I don't know, it's too many things to stipulate on. Uh, I'm kind of just more of the, I like to just have kind of one thing to focus on sort of i mean i don't know but it's just not my thing i know it's your thing um but it seems like as someone who really enjoys this genre it has a lot to offer people (laughs) so that's cool (laughs) that's cool i mean i i knew that that you liked that game a lot um so that's sweet it's dope good times good memes and good times all right on to your number three then all right uh number three um, had to put a Mario game on here. Um, which one it was? Sunshine? That was tricky. Um, you know, I was really thinking about it. I was really Sunshine. thinking about Super Mario Sunshine. Yeah. But no, it's not yeah. Mario Sunshine. Uh, my favorite Mario game. Uh, my third favorite video game is uh, gotta give it up to Super Mario World. Wow. Super uh, Super Nintendo. Even though 
the first time I did play it was on the Game Boy Advance, um, Super Mario Advance um, 3 or 2. I think it was Super Mario Advance 2, um, Super Mario World. That was like a port of the Super Nintendo game. Um, listen, we all have our first... We, we have one of the... There, there's games that we play when we're younger that just... They invade your subconscious. They are with you forever. You will play the game and you will just remember it forever. You will never forget about it. I can't forget Super Mario World. Uh, when I first... Well, it's just, just playing it as a kid. Um, just learning about, cause I was, you know, when I played on the, the stuttering over myself, when I played on the, the Game Boy Advance, that was one of the first games I ever had in period. It's very young when I had it. And it just taught me everything about a game. I learned everything there was to know about Mario Bros. It, it's so, it's, it's just one of those games that just, I played when I was younger. I still play it now and I still get that same amount of fun. And I just love it so much. Um, what was great about having it on the Game Boy Advance is that I played with my sisters. That was like a family game. We would always be, you know, on the road trips, and we'd be playing it on the, our little our little Game Boy. We only had one. We had to swap that shit around and like change. You could change for Mario and Luigi in that game. You can't do it in the Super Nintendo version. Um, but you know, for that one, we played. You could change characters on the fly. Um, and it, it, Luigi was a little bit, he could jump a little farther. Mario was a little bit faster. Um, just so many good times that came out of that game. And I just, whenever I think of a Mario game, that's the first one that comes to my mind. There's nothing else that really compares to it. Um, and this was, at the time, this was like the, a, a launch title for the Super Nintendo. You don't see games like that get, a, get like a, a game that, of that quality at launch. You know what I mean? I do, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mario World, just to talk about the game itself, um, it's it's just Mario from beginning to end, you know? The levels are all amazingly designed. The game is, is it's not overblowing with graphics, but it's simple, it gets the job done, it looks great. Um, it's just fun as hell, you know? Every time you play the game, you can skip levels. There's tons of secrets in each world. It's fun. Um, you know, the platforming, the control is just beautiful. Everything handles great. Mario is, is fantastic in that game. Um, whenever I think of a Mario game, I always just think of Super Mario World. It's just, it brought so many good times for me. Um, and, you know, I, I really wanted to put a 3D game on here. I really was thinking about putting Galaxy on here. But, I mean, I, I think I come back to Mario World more. <laughs> like, every time I have a new system... I gotta get super. I gotta get Super Mario World on it. It's like my. I need to have it. It's like it's like my cocaine. I gotta have my Mario World on my on my game. I gotta have it. Um, just fucking love it, man. So many good times with it. Discovering all the secrets in the game was so much fun. Um, controls great. Music is great. Classic as hell. Uh, I just love it so much, man. I really do. Super Mario World is just. One of the most classic games I will be playing forever. I will play that game until the end of time. I had no idea you liked it that much. I, you know what? I don't think I talk about it a lot, but I mean, I just I, I get a big rush of nostalgia every time I play it. It just takes me back right to being a kid again and playing through the, the levels, sucking ass. Um, you know, yeah. playing it with my sisters and we could talk about it and how who we liked better, Mario or Luigi. Um, Again, yeah, discovering all the secrets, um, all the platforming was so much fun. Uh, I just love it. It's it's. I, I feel like I don't have anything like <laughs> of structure to say about it. It's just great. Oh yeah, I've definitely seen some speed runs about that. Yeah. yeah. The speed running community does really enjoy it. You can get through the game in like probably like twenty minutes or so, maybe even less, probably ten. <laughs> Nope. For sure. Um, but yeah, man, whenever it, 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 I think it actually got me into video games in general, just playing it as a kid. And, you know, if I, it just took me down the path, man. It really, some games just take you all the way back. Super Mario World takes me right back to being a kid again every time I play it. And it just gives me that same kind of satisfaction every time I turn it on. It is like the definition of a video game to me, a great video game. 
Super Mario World, fucking love it. Favorite Mario game. Sunshine is great. And that was my first 3D game. It might have been my first game, actually, but Mario World came right after that. And that got that kept me around. Damn. So I was honestly yeah. shook that you didn't pick Sunshine. I really I was I was heavily, heavily debating it. Um, I'll put that as an honorable mention when we get to that, but yeah, um, Mario World, man. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that when it comes to classic 2D platform games. Damn, okay. That's what got me into the whole genre in general. Good to know. Shall we yep. continue then? Yeah, let's go to number two. All right. Mike, I think you can guess what my number two is. I think you uh, got it. Do you want me to say it? Yeah, guess it. Is it Sonic Adventure 2? It is. <laughs> knew it <laughs> so got him <laughs> yeah that's my number two uh sonic adventure 2 battle for the gamecube uh, the 2002 north america release it's a platformer action adventure you know single player multiplayer if you've been around this channel for a while you know how it rolls we have a let's play of it i'll link that mm -hmm. in the description mm -hmm. um it was the first video game i ever got uh at some point i don't know maybe i was like eight or something and i asked for a console for christmas and my parents got me this they got mm -hmm. me a gamecube and they got me this game and they got me um my number one game which you guys will hear in a little bit uh, mm -hmm. and uh i played the shit out of sonic adventure 2 battle i think it's the best that that series has offered me so far and right i know, I know those are fighting words but i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> stand by them i think it is so simple yet so complex the level design is amazing um mm -hmm. i really like the characters i like playing all the different types of characters on there you guys know i love my treasure hunting levels but also i really do enjoy the speed levels as well mechs can eat my ass though um, but i still liked playing their levels they're so pretty mm -hmm. yeah um but the crown jewel of that game is the chow garden the one thing that Nintendo did not, or was it? No, the Sega. The one thing that Sega did not capitalize on was the fact that everyone still plays that game for the Chow Garden. They, mm -hmm. These little adorable blobs are so customizable and so cute that you just want to play with them for hours on end. And that's what I did. I must have sunk five to ten right. hours into the Chow Garden. I got I every know. crossbreed, every color. Oh, I love those things. Nothing like yeah. watching them race. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I also got to mention that Mike and I, this was kind of our connecting game. Mm -hmm. The one that brought us together. We were both like in camp and we were talking and we we're like, yo, you play Sonic? Like, yeah. Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. We're friends. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> we played Sonic Adventure 2 and we're still friends. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a real split when we play multiplayer still to this day. Oh, yeah. Half the time I get it, half the time he does. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, Sonic Adventure 2 is is so dear to my heart. I really do love that game. I think it's great. Um, it, yeah, whenever I think of that game, I definitely think of, uh, you know, I think that's the game that really made us friends. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, if, if I wasn't friends with you, I wouldn't be friends with the friends we made in college. We wouldn't go on to do... We wouldn't be we wouldn't all be friends i feel like if we didn't have that game as an anchor <laughs> you know what i mean kind of yeah it's a trickle down i think it all started from you know it's just like it's like you know and, and i when i think of that game I remember i when i moved to when i moved from the bronx to rybrook um it was very it was a little bit hard for me you know being the new kid i didn't know anybody um so when I met you and I learned that, you know, you like Sonic too, and that there was other people that, you know, cause you know, I had, I had friends like that in, in, in uh, elementary school, but I never like, you know, I, I never really, you know, I, I had to leave. So I didn't really get to keep those connections. But when I, when, you know, we had that connecting thread that we both like Sonic Adventure 2, that really like just started everything. Um, I feel like, and we wouldn't be here today if we didn't have that game. Yeah, it definitely, you know, kicked it off. Um yeah absolutely yeah. love that game still play it to this day mm -hmm. big fan and i hope that they make a sonic adventure 3 someday just like that yeah no i i really hope they do i mean if they do it they gotta do it right 
Yep, definitely. The, the fans want it. It's there. They do. They don't want another, uh, oh man, what was that trash game? Sonic Boom? Yeah, the fans don't want another Sonic Boom. We don't want that. We don't want Forces either. Forces was... was uh, <laughs> it was... Speak of that. Let's not let's not talk about the bad part of Sonic. Let's just focus on the good parts, which is you know a lot of a lot of games I, I really enjoy of Sonic. That's my number. Um, two. That's your number two, Sonic Adventure Two Battle. I, I expected that to be definitely in your within your top five. Easily, yeah. I didn't. I thought it was going to be your number one, maybe, but I think I know what's going to be your number one though. I think you do. All right. Well, I'll go with my number two. I so my number two. I so badly. You know, thinking about it here, I'm like, <sighs> trying to choose my favorite Sonic game is like trying to choose which child is my favorite child. <laughs> if if I were to equate it to anything, I feel like if I had to choose my favorite kid, who, how the fuck would I do that? Yeah. My heart is telling me Sonic Adventure 2. But I know, my, I know that in, I know that the game that I enjoy playing from beginning to end, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Really? It's Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Okay. <sighs> Look, man, I Sonic Adventure 2 got me hooked. I have a lot of great times with that game. But Sonic Adventure 2 led me to play Sonic Mega Collection. Yep. On Sonic Mega Collection, I played Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Sonic 3. But what kept me coming back was Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which is to let just let, to give history. So when that came out on 1994 for the Sega Genesis... Sonic 3 came out first. And then there's another game called Sonic and Knuckles. What Sonic and Knuckles was, was an add-on that could be played on its own, which was its own game, Sonic and Knuckles, and there was Sonic 3. You can add on Sonic and Knuckles to Sonic 3, like put it on top of the slot. And that makes a big fucking game. So all of Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles go together to form one one huge game. Wow, that's a novel idea. So there are, and that's what really gets me. It's huge. It's a big game. There's so many levels. There's so many zones. And to me, this is peak Sonic. This is what kept me coming back all the time. Sonic Adventure 2, I loved. I put so much time into it. But Sonic 3 Knuckles, I always had a blast playing it every single time. The music incredible amazing so catchy michael jackson helped wrote it did write it did you know that i did not sonic michael jackson helped write sonic 3's music so i think that just attests to how good it is um and to be honest it's just so simple so stupid so fucking fun i can just play that game gotta play it all the way through i i know it like by the back of my hand like the whole game going to each level um it's just so great the level keeping the flow going, going through every game, just running through it. It always kept me coming back. It's, it, it was hard when I was younger. It's, it's, it's still, it's not a walk in the park. The ending definitely gets tricky, but you can literally just play it and just have a great time just enjoying it. And it's just the highest quality Sonic game too. It's also beautiful for the system. I mean, I know that it's, um, you know, it's old, and, you know, actually, now that I think about it, Sonic Mania, which came out recently, also amazing. I was, I, I that's one of my other favorite ones. I kind of wanted to put that one on here too, but had to keep it, you know, I have more memories with Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Um, yeah, I just fucking love it, man. Sonic, I, this is what kept me coming back as a Sonic fan. This is what kept me a fan of video games in general. Um, I love so- Super Mario World, but Sonic 3 and Knuckles... It's just cooler to me. It's just fucking rad. And you can play as Knuckles. <laughs> yeah, you can play as Knuckles. You can play as new clays. But yeah, um, if Sonic Three, I think, is the peak of the whole the whole franchise. I really fucking love it. Um, if they could make another game like that, that'd be fucking awesome. Sonic Mania already almost got to that point, but Sonic Three Knuckles, man. I really fucking love it. It's it's um it's just if there's a game that I can just turn on and start playing and just not put it down, then it's gonna be on the list. Okay. All right. But I yeah, really, uh, really thought you were gonna say Sonic Unleashed. <laughs> I you know what? 
I was thinking about that, but I, I think Sonic Unleashed. I only really enjoy half of it. I enjoy the the running levels, the daytime, yeah. or I enjoy the daytime levels, but not the nighttime levels. Sonic Three, the whole game is fun the whole way through. <laughs> I don't have to like skip anything to get to the good parts. The whole thing is the good part. So um, it doesn't. There's just no bullshit with it. It's just Sonic from beginning to end. It's fun as hell. Addicting as fuck. Uh, you know, really kept my love for platformers. And I just love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Good to know. All right. Well, we've run all the way down from our number 10s to our my number 2s. My throat is like killing me. <laughs> we've been talking for a while. We really have. <laughs> we've run all the way down from our 10s to our 2s. I think it's time to do our honorable mentions. All right. You first. I'll kick off. I've got a lot. Um, eight to be exact. They were so close to being on this list. Like my <laughs> my number ten could have easily been shuffled out with any of these games here. Um, from the GameCube, honorable mentions Pikmin. I love that game. I sunk a lot of hours into it, but it doesn't <laughs> have very much replayability. Luigi's Mansion. Love the premise. Love the <laughs> remake. Oh, I love uh, that game. That's my Halloween go-to. <laughs> yep. Um. The SpongeBob movie, yeah, I really liked that game. I think it was. Oh, far I, I like that's a great game. Far inferior to. They don't else. make movie based games like that anymore, man. They really don't. They do, yeah. They they really don't. But this was a one of a kind, and honestly, stunner to play. Um, this one was super close to being my number eleven, my my number ten. It, it was Legend of Zelda: Wind Waker. <laughs> oh yeah, I know you like Wind Waker. I wanted to talk about that while you were on about your you know majora's mask but i didn't want to drop it but that well, i was on my majora's mask tirade yeah majora's mask windmaker wind waker's on mine um sonic dx also that's on my honorable mentions mm -hmm. from the pc minecraft obviously we love minecraft it's so much fun yes we love minecraft i love xcom that's strategy love strategy mm -hmm. um, and then from the wii guitar hero world tour Oh yeah, love that classic. Game. Those are my honorable mentions. All right, pretty good, uh, I'll but go not good enough. <laughs> pretty good, just didn't make the cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these ones the same thing for me. Um, so mine one, uh, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. It's an amazing two D platformer. I really love that game. Super underappreciated. Um, I really love it. Um, really got me the Donkey Kong Country games. Uh, Super Mario Sunshine, uh, my first 3D Mario game, uh, very unique 3D Mario game with the, the flood pack. They got to do a remake of that. They got to do a sequel. Fucking awesome game. Luigi's Mansion, um, like you said, great Halloween game. Uh, first game I played on the GameCube, I believe, ever. Nice. Um, I didn't like it when I grew up. Uh, now I've grown a very strong appreciation for it. Um, really love that game. Uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Uh, I played this at my cousin's house on the PlayStation 2. Um, it's the first time I ever heard fuck in a video game. Damn. <laughs> and I, I would always try to fly planes and crash them. <laughs> it was fucking fun as hell. Um, so that was my number, that's my, uh, that one. Uh, Guitar Hero, uh, uh, Guitar Hero 3, the Wii. Ah, yes. Um, love that game. <laughs> Got me, uh, started to kind of get me hooked on music. Um, very fun game to play, so play it now. Um, Wii Sports. I um, almost put that too. I wanted to put that at number ten just just because, but um, it's an it's an era thing. Yeah, uh, Wii Sports very fun. Got everyone involved in the game. Had a lot of good times with that. Wind Waker, um, my second favorite three D Zelda game. Um, I love the art style. It's beautiful. Uh, great game. Uh, love it to death. Tony Hawk Pro Skater three. <laughs> oh shit! I should have put that on my list. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot that existed. You could just put it in a number 11 spot. Yeah, that's my 11. <laughs> um, I love Pro Skater 3, though. That, that uh, really... I like I Pro Skater 4. Of, I, I played 3. I didn't have 4. I only had 3. Damn. Um, to keep going, Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, that just came out for the PlayStation 4. One of the best... Um, the best fighting game I've seen based off of like an anime. Um, really fun game. I get really into it. Pisses me off though, so I don't play it all the time. Um, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. <laughs> that's a mouthful. I did like um, that one. 
that game is great. Um, so many characters in that game, so many to choose from. Um, it just boggles your mind. Um, yeah, that's a great game. Um, I love the combat in that. Uh, oh, I said Overwatch already. Um, the Al- Arkham Asylum games are all amazing. Oh, yeah. Those are great. Uh, almost made the list, but didn't. Um, Spider-Man, that came out for the PlayStation 4, that is a fucking awesome game. That's all I wanted from the Spider-Man game since I played Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation uh on the GameCube, that's a great game. Uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, I really wanted to put it on here, but I think Sonic 3 is more quality. But Sonic Adventure 2, I've had so many good times. Made me be friends with Robert. Um, really got me hooked on video games in general. Sonic Generations, I think it's the best 3D Sonic game, um, without a doubt. <laughs> um, it's the most fun to play. Um, does everything right. Uh, Sonic Unleashed. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck that. No, redacted. Sonic Unleashed is the best 3D Sonic game in terms of just the, the, the daytime levels. The game's beautiful. Never a good, best looking Sonic game by far. Um, and the last one on my honorable mentions, because I know it's going to be one of my favorites, is uh, I'm going to put Doom on there because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> okay. Even though I just started playing it, it's fucking awesome. I know I'm going to love it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, sorry. I had to tear through those real quick. No, that's fine. Uh, I'm also just going to throw in League of Legends on my honorable mentions as well. I did sink a lot of hours into that game. Sure, just, just plug them in right now while I got the chance. Plug. All right, uh, that's all I've got for honorables. All right, I think it's time. For all right, number ones. one. Let's hear it. All right, Mike, you know what it is. Yeah, that. Um, it's uh, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. The GameCube. Hmm. I didn't see that one coming at all. <laughs> nope. Um, that game came out in 2003. It's the second game. Well, technically, yeah, no, that's the second game I ever played. Um, I got it in combination with Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Uh, mm-hmm. That one Christmas, and boy, was it a game. This game is the one that I actually had to go out and buy a game. Uh, what was it? A memory card for? Yeah. And uh, that really upped my gaming experience with a GameCube. Oh, you can do so much more when you can save your game. Mm -hmm. I used to just go days on end without saving and just not shut off the GameCube. (laughs) Just to keep going farther in the game. I'm sure that racked up the electricity bill. (laughs) Oh, it did, yeah. Um, But that game is a masterpiece of its time, I think. Uh, It's a platformer game, basically, action-adventure where Spongebob exists in his universe, Battle for Bikini Bottom. He has to fight a bunch of Mm -hmm. robots that Plankton totally released out of the chum bucket to try and steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Mm -hmm. But uh, you go out, you smash them all, you go to all your favorite places, Jellyfish Field, Goo Lagoon, Downtown Bikini Bottom, the Krusty Krab, stuff like that. And... uh, yeah, you go around, smash up the things, and collect golden spatulas. Collect Patrick's mm-hmm. socks, because I don't know why he wears socks. I don't know how he lost them, but damn, he's got a hundred somewhere that somehow got out into right. all the levels. <laughs> damn it, Patrick. Um, I have a lot of memories of this game growing up. Coupled with Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, I've definitely put the most amount of hours into this game. Mm. It is so vibrant honestly tantalizing to my eyes beautiful the music just right. sounds amazing in all the levels uh it has mechanics that well they were so well received by the community that they made a remake that's coming out later this year so i was gonna mention that Mickey yeah i'm sure you're excited for that. yes one of my that favorite we- uh youtubers right now is playing he's the world record holder for the uh speed run Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Love watching him speedrun the hell out of this game. There's so many little tricks you can use to break boundaries that didn't exist. Um, and, uh, yeah. Me fan. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's a, probably the best um, adapted, like, adapted from another medium uh, video game. Like the best uh, TV-based game, or what do you what do you fucking call it? License game. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, license probably the best license game that's ever been made. Um, Easily, top one of the best. Um, they're getting much better with license games now, but back in the day, that was kind of like that was like the the pinnacle of like license games. Because I've played it a little bit. Um, I'm not. I haven't played it too much. 
Um, but from what I played, it's a lot of fun. Um, they really like, if you're a fan of the show, it will capitalize on everything. <laughs> You get to meet I love Spongebob too. I know Rob loves Spongebob. I do, yes. Every other word out of my mouth is a Spongebob reference. To have, But to have like a video game that like is so faithful to the show, but also so fun on its own, um, that's amazing. <laughs> like, And I do love that. I like that style too of 3D collectathons. It is, and it handles so well too. Yeah. All the, uh, yeah. the, the level designs were made amazingly. They mm -hmm. definitely put a lot of time into it. Um, it's one of the because it's a GameCube game. It had to have a well. What what are these things called? Where they have a boundary around the outside of the world. It's like a world border. Box. Border. Yeah, world border. Oh, skybox. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it has a skybox, but you never really notice that it doesn't move because mm -hmm. you're moving and it looks so good. Mm -hmm. It feels like it really is you're in the show kind of thing. Yeah. Which is a lot to say out of a 2003 development. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, that's like, yeah, it's like a legendary game. That's why it's getting a remake because everyone loves it so much. I, I can't, I really want to play the remake because I haven't actually played the whole game through. The remake um, looks beautiful. Oh, dude, they, they look like they're going hard on it. <laughs> they, uh, they've had fucking 17 years. Yep, <laughs> they better do it right and it looks like they're going to. Damn. So, I mean, but what makes this your favorite like what puts it above like medieval 2 for you this game i will continue to come back to for the rest of time because mm -hmm. of how nostalgic this really is to me um the gameplay is so lighthearted and it, even though it's not the it's not free world it feels like the world is free right um there's a lot of gimmicks, and all the levels really feel unique mm -hmm. and nice to play. And even to this day, I'm, I'm still finding things that I haven't found in the past. Yeah, I mean, that, that's amazing. That A game you can play for, what, how many years now? It's like 17, 17 years? Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's scary. <laughs> 17 years, almost two decades. I know. Oh, we're, we're old, man. Fuck. <laughs> yep. But yeah, if a game can keep you back and playing it and still having as much fun like I have with like the last few games I've listed, then yeah, um, they, they must be your favorites. You can just never get tired of playing them over and over. It just is. Well, that's all you got. We got anything else to say? Man, final it. final Go thoughts? Play it if you haven't played it, GameCube. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right then. <laughs> so, um. My number one, I think you know what's coming. It's Super Smash Bros. Yeah, I saw it coming. Super Smash Bros, man. Um, Which one? Where do I... Can I say all? Yeah, that's fine. Can I just say all? I can't choose. I can't. I just can't. Listen, man. There's no game that... I put so much time into every single fran every single installment of this of this franchise. It is absolutely ridiculous. It's ludicrous how much time I spent on it. How much I've agonized over getting all the new ones when they were being when they were being announced. The date from it being announced to me getting it is like the most fucking horrible horrible experience of my life. Just waiting for it and wanting to play it. It is agonizing. Mm -hmm. And if I could, this is a game series that has brought me so many good times with so many people. It doesn't, it, this is what made me, uh, if I could get a little bit sentimental for a second. Yeah, go for it. When I was, um, when I was going into, I don't know if you know this about me, but when I was, because I haven't, I haven't tell a lot of people, but when I was going into, um, when I was going into college, I was having a really tough time mentally. Yeah, you um, mentioned it. Just not, I, I was just going through a lot of changes. Um, I guess if you just say it's puberty, but. Um, but you were 17. I was, I was, well, I mean, I was a bit of a, you know, late bloomer, I guess. But I, I, basically it was a lot of like being in a new place, being a new um, whole thing. Um, it very affected me on like a, a deep kind of level. Um, I was really unhappy. Um, 
But the thing was, it, this was 2014. So the new game that was coming out was Super Smash Bros. for the, for the Wii U and 3DS. Um, and so I, I knew you uh, much before college. And so I, I knew you in school, and that kept me grounded. But um, when I got the 3DS game, I, um, Eric also is one of our friends, one of our very good friends. Um, and when he got the game, I got it. And he invited me over to play it. And this is when I was like, I was really, I didn't want to do anything. I was like really hung up and upset and unhappy. Um, when we started playing and I started going over there um, and we had such a good time, everything changed for the better. Um, everything just got so much better after that. And honestly, if it hadn't been for Smash Bros, you know, it, I mean, there was other factors for sure. But if it hadn't been for Smash Bros and, and you and everyone, um, I don't know if I ever would have gotten out of that rut. <laughs> you know, um, it was very, um, it really just got me out of that spot and it made me enjoy everything again. Um, so Smash Bros is very, very important to me um, just as a game. And that's why it's like my favorite because it just means so much to me um because of that just that time of my life you know what i mean i do yeah I was so there. yeah you were there um and yeah and I, I thank smash bros for being there i thank you guys for being there um and yeah just laying on the good times um so i have that to thank for it um but i mean i guess now i can actually talk about the actual games um when i so the did I ever tell you how I first came to know about Smash Bros? You did not. So um, the first time I ever I came to know about it, I was actually just, I was in the gaming store with my dad. Um, I think it was like, at this point, it was like so long ago, it was like EB Games, I believe. Do you remember when it was that? <laughs> nope. You remember, you remember when GameStop used to be like EB Games? Nope. Oh, that's way back then. But it was in the, we were in the game store. My dad, I was looking for a new game to play for the GameCube. My dad points out this game, and there's Mario on it. There's uh, Zelda. There's Link on it, who I didn't know at the time. There was Mario on it, Pikachu on it, and Kirby, and Bowser. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And my dad, I probably wouldn't have even gotten it if my dad didn't point it out to me. He's like, hey, this, is, this looks like a, a good game. I'm like, all right, whatever. And so I played it. Like, fucking God, he did. <laughs> Because holy shit, man, Super Smash Bros. Melee is such a nostalgic throwback to me. Me and my sisters played that game so much. We had such a great time with it. Unlocking all the characters, talking to my friends about it, and just like every time you play with people, it just like brings on the good times, right? Like, yes, you know, every time you play Smash Bros., some stupid shit's gonna happen. Everyone's gonna laugh, and everyone just has so much fun. Every, everyone has a good time. It always brings on the smiles and everyone just, it, you know, everyone, whatever is happening, everyone can just kind of just like let their guards down and just play it. Um, so Melee was great. I had so much good times with it. Unlocking all the characters was incredible. Brawl, Jesus Christ. Sonic the Hedgehog being in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Do you remember that? The spam is on. Holy shit. I almost shit my pants when I found out that Sonic was going to be in Super Smash Bros. I was... I could not wait for it. My mom bought that game for my cousins and she had the she had the game here and I didn't have it yet. So to see it in my house and having it taunting me, oh my god, dude. Wrecked. That was such a tease. Um Brawl had a lot of great times with uh playing it with you. Um I played at your house a lot, like we were talking about way back in the list. Jesus Christ, maybe like two hours ago. Um <laughs> But yeah, um, and Super Smash Bros. for Wii U is just is fucking amazing. Yeah, like that, like I said, it got me out of a rut, um, and that was like the most fun I've had playing it. I got, you know, when you play something a lot, you get really good at it. Smash Bros. is probably the game I'm best at. I can, I really fucking love it. I play it all the time, um, and Super and every new installment adds like it's the same game, but it just it refines it every single time, and it's just incredible how much polish they put on it how much love they put into the game how many characters are in it and dude when ultimate was announced i almost shit my pants i swear to god uh throwback 
I almost shit my pants. When they announced that everyone was going to be in the new game, I fucking lost it. All the old ones back. Um, and Ridley being a character who I've wanted for so long, that fucking floored me. So the wait for all of 2018 was... 2018 to me was just the, the longest wait of all time in my life waiting for that game to come out. But... Man, I put I put so much time into Ultimate. It's like it's it's quite sad actually, but I fucking love it. Um, with every and the hype, the hype for every new game is just astounding. Every new character that's announced, even if it's, people don't like it, there's still so much like coverage on it. Everyone's looking forward to it, and it just gets you all gets me riled up, man. It makes me fucking excited. It, it makes me excited to be a gamer and to like. Just be a part of it, you know what I mean? I do, yes. I think that you picked the multiplayer franchise that exists. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's a cliche. I know that everyone loves Smash Bros, but like for what it means to me and what it just means for me is just a, a person who likes games and likes having fun with friends. Um I can't I, I there's no other game I can put at number one. It just it's just it's just, it's just impossible to me. Everything I Smash Bros is like my crack. I need my I need I gotta have my crack. Gotta have my Smash Bros. It's just impossible. It's just something I can't live without. It's ridiculous. I concur. But yeah, I mean like like what I mean like you agree, like you know what I'm getting at though, right? I do. Yeah, this is one of the few games that we play together when I come over to your house. Yeah, all the time, every single time. It's like, hey, you want to play Smash? All right, fine, <laughs> cool. It rotates um, between the same couple of games, Smash, Sonic Adventure 2, occasionally Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. No, it's it's a uh, which Call of Duty? Uh, Black Ops. We Black play. Ops, yeah. Mm, that kind of stuff. Um, and I totally get what you're saying about you know this is the game where you and your friends can just relax and have fun and you know chill out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I actually have one really nice memory that I don't know why this stuck in my mind. I can't remember, you know, my chemistry formulas, but I can remember this memory. There uh -huh. was one instance junior year of college where it was you, me, Eric, Josh playing in your room. Yeah. And I was playing D to D and you were playing Ganondorf and I spiked you off stage <laughs> <laughs> and we paused the game, um, saved a replay and then started raging on you. <laughs> and uh yep was one of the, yeah i remember that <laughs> one of the few wins that i have over you mm -hmm. in multiplayer match yeah and there was a yeah, the tournament just, too that you fucking beat me at fuck oh, we, that yeah that was <laughs> fucking that was stupid counter story. that was brawl that was brawl that was no that was we was that at that point the one I we're talking think, about i think that one was a brawl tournament no, that was Wii U, man. That was okay. right after it came out. Yeah, I, so I trust me on this. Mike trust and me. I did one tournament together once, and uh, we both got up pretty far. We got to, what was it, top four? We got... Top eight. The way the tournament was handled was stupid anyway, because they didn't bracket it off like you should. They didn't do 1v1s. They did multi-battles, where it's like, the first one out is out. Like, that's not how it should be. But anyway, Rob... We were doing the tournament, and Rob and I got pretty far, and I was going to get to the finals, and then Rob did a fucking stupid counter on Ike, <laughs> and it fucking got me out of the, the game. I was so pissed off. And then I moved on and got bodied in the next round by a Sonic. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but yeah, oh. I, uh, I was at the top of the, uh, I was at the top border, and Mike came up to finish me off, and I countered on his <laughs> up B, and he got fucking wrecked. I don't remember what the move was. I just remember being very pissed. You tried afterwards. to go for the disrespect, and in turn, I just cheesed you out of your your tournament victory, which oh, Eric man. turned around to win. So it's funny that a game that brings so many good times pisses me off so fucking much. I swear to God, I don't think I've ever raged more at any other game than Smash Bros. When I played with Eric, because Eric is like very very good. <laughs> Eric is like always my biggest competition all the time because he's. I don't know how he fucking does it, man, but I would just get so pissed. I'd, like, throw chairs and shit. <laughs> fucking annoying. I remember. 
I would get so get so pissed off. Everyone would everyone would get involved and like start like talking shit. But man, that's such good. It's just such good memory. It just brings me back to the good times. You know, with all the shit going on right now, you know, I just gotta think about the good times and all the all the good friends we have. And yeah, man, Smash Bros is just great. I love it so much. Every new game is every game stands on its own. Everyone has its everything they're good at. Brawl has a great story campaign. Ultimate has the most characters and the best gameplay. Wii U is Wii U. <laughs> that, that's the, the gap between the Brawl release and the Wii U release was so long and awaited that it oh, was yeah. super hype when it came out. Oh, dude. Yeah, I was super excited for Smash 4. I mean, it came out on like the worst system ever, but... It did, it did. I mean, shit. The, the, that was like the... I think Wii U only existed just so it could have Smash on it. And if it well, was the case, it served its purpose well. I played Smash 64 too on the Nintendo 64 for a little bit. Um, not as fun, to my, my opinion. It's just so much more choppy. Um, the new games just really are just so much better. Um, but yeah, man, uh, can't deny Smash Bros. My favorite game of all time. Uh, it doesn't matter which one. I'll pop it in. I'll play you. Um, fucking love it. All right. Well, I believe and that concludes our top ten. That was a fucking mouthful. <laughs> My mouth is dry as fuck. Half video. Um. So yeah, we hope you, uh, whoever's watching, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um. If you have your top tens, uh, let us know. Uh, love to talk about this kind of stuff. Love discussion. Um. Yeah. So if you sticking around, uh, thanks for sticking around. If you made it all the way through this video, you are a legend. Give yourself a fucking medal for yeah. listening to us postulate over our games. I can't believe you listened to us ramble for an hour and a half about sentimental shit. Thank you. I think it was more than an hour and a half. I think we've been talking about this for like two hours. We could very well have been. There's no. Yeah, check the recording recording. time at the end. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm tired. My mouth is dry. Yeah. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed. Keep on playing. If you did, you know, if you stay safe like out there. Subscribe. If you want to see us play any of these games, leave it in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video, guys. All right, later.